Hello, Instagram. I've missed you guys and we are overdue for a school is in session. I got a couple of comments from you about Mark and Patricia McCluskey, the personal injury attorneys, AKA Karen and Ken in St. Louis who pulled their guns earlier this week on peaceful protesters. Question, is it illegal to point a gun at someone either in anger or because you felt like flexing on them if they're not threatening you? You guys already know the answer to this one. This is an easy, this is an easy question this week. Of course it is illegal to do that. Um, and in Missouri, it is a felony to uh, point a lethal weapon at another person, either in anger or because you wanted to flex on them. You can't do that if the person isn't threatening you for the obvious reason. If somebody points their gun at me and has their finger on the trigger, which Patricia McCluskey appeared to in the photos, uh, now I'm going to pull my gun out on her, right? I'm gonna claim that she's threatening me. So uh, there's been some chatter on the internet about the fact that Missouri is what is known as a stand your ground state. So I just wanna give you a little teeny tiny mini lecture on self-defense laws because that's what we're talking about when we use the phrase stand your ground. And it's not clear to me that this case involves self-defense. In fact, I think that's very far-fetched, but it's what the McCluskeys are claiming. So let's talk about that for a minute. Um, American self-defense law hails from a couple of common law traditions in Europe. Uh, the sort of baseline common law tradition is that if you are attacked, you have a duty to retreat. That is, if you, you know, if somebody's coming at you and you think they're going to kill you or you think they're going to like seriously mess you up, uh, the law dictates that you're supposed to get away if you can get away. The obvious exception is if your back is against the wall. That is, if you're running away, they catch up to you and you literally hit a wall. At that point, you have a right to match force with force, right? You have a right to deploy force against the threat that is coming at you. And by the way, you deploy force in order to repel the threat. You don't deploy force in order to show somebody, uh, teach somebody a lesson, whatever. Okay, so that's the sort of baseline uh, common law tradition. And then there's another common law tradition, which you're probably also familiar with, and that's the castle doctrine. And the castle doctrine just takes that concept of the wall and expands it to your home. So if you are attacked in your home, your home is treated as your wall. That is, you shouldn't have a duty to retreat if you are attacked in your own home. So if you're attacked in your own home, you can deploy force without having to show that it was possible for you to like run out the garage or you know jump through a second floor bathroom window to get away. Okay. What Stand Your Ground does, among other things, Stand Your Ground expands the number of places that you can be where you don't have a duty to retreat. So a lot of Stand Your Ground states say that in addition to not having a duty to retreat in your home, you don't have a duty to retreat if you're attacked in your car, you don't have a duty to retreat if you're attacked in your place of business, and some Stand Your Ground states say, actually, you don't have a duty to retreat, period. That is, if you're in a place lawfully, whether it's a park or a gym or you're walking down the sidewalk or you're at the mall, if you're in a place lawfully and you're attacked, there is no duty to retreat. There is no duty to endeavor to escape before deploying force against your attacker. That's one component. And so the argument here is, all right, well, protesters were on a road that was marked as private. The McCluskey, McCluskey's are... Uh, and some of their supporters are asserting that protesters might have um, infringed on some of their property directly. That in and of itself isn't enough to justify the use of lethal force. You would need that plus a reasonable belief, reasonable belief that you are being threatened with great bodily injury or death. Now, there's some elements in stand your ground law that essentially make this notion of reasonable belief or the lack thereof difficult to prosecute. I will save that for another school is in session. But for right now, the focus needs to be on whether or not 
there was any kind of credible fear here on the part of McCluskey's uh, that would have somehow justified them uh, pointing their weapons uh, not only at each other, but at other people. But for right now, you know that you cannot point your gun at another person if that person is not threatening you. Such an easy school is in session today, so easy. Um, as always, I love hearing from you, so keep your comments and questions coming. Um, and I so appreciate the fact that all of you are taking up and, and going so hard for Brianna Taylor right now. I think I might have to do another uh, School is in Session on the Brianna Taylor case because it's making me crazy like I know it's making you crazy. All right, but until then, stay safe, everyone. Don't point your guns at each other.